Let's look at confidence intervals. We're going to use an example where we know that every year about 2 million students take the SAT tests. Everybody sits for the test the first time and after they see their scores, some decide they want to take the SAT test the second time. What we want to find out is, on average, how much do test scores go up after sitting for the test a second time? So on average, we want to measure millions of students' scores and call it the Greek letter mu, which means population mean. But it would take a long time to measure changes of millions of scores, which would give us our population mean. So what we're going to do is take a sample out of the millions of about 1,000 and find out what 1,000 people did. And that's called the sample mean, X bar. We're going to take 1,000 changes of scores, divide it by 1,000, and find what the average increase in scores was. What we want to find out is what the population mean is of the millions of students. What we're measuring is X bar, the sample mean of 1,000 students. And it depends on which 1,000 students we sample, of course. Let's say in our first sample, we measure changes of test scores and find the average increase was 22.7. And the standard deviation for this group was 50.2. That looks like this on a graph. Our mean is 22.7. And if we go up one standard deviation, we get to 72.9. That's 50.2 points higher than our mean. And on the lower end, they actually did worse lost 27.5 on their score for our 1,000 students, but the average was 22.7 higher. What's the average of the million students, given this information? What we want to do is say, with 95.4% confidence, we know what mu is based on this sample of 1,000 students. Now what we need is two standard deviations. Let's see what that would look like on this graph. If we go up another 50.2, now we're at 123.1 better. And if we go down two standard deviations, we're at 77.7 .7 points worse. But what we've done is captured 95.4% of all test scores in this sample of 1,000 students. We can use this number, 95.4%, in two standard deviations to find our population mean. And how we do that is we create a range around our sample mean and we can say with a confidence that we know what the population mean is. So the formula depends on 2 times the standard deviation. That's where we get our confidence level of 95.4%. Take our sample mean x bar, and we take plus or minus a multiplier z times the standard deviation, and we divide that by the square root of the sample size, in this case 1,000. And z, our multiplier, in order to give us the confidence interval that we're looking for, 95.4%, we're going to multiply by 2. That's what we showed here. 2 times the standard deviation gives us 95.4%. So the sample mean plus 2 times standard deviation divided by the square root of the sample size, n, and we take the mean minus 2 times the standard deviation divided by the square root of the sample size, n. So for the first one, it's 22.7 plus 3.2. It gives us an upper bound of 25.9. And on the second one, we subtract 3.2 and get a lower bound of 19.5. That means we've trapped the population mean between these numbers around our sample mean. And with a confidence of 95.4%, we can say mu is somewhere between these two numbers. But again, this depends on the sample that we took. And notice we're only saying we have a confidence of 95.4%. That means we're going to be wrong 4.6% of the time. Let's take another sample, and I'll show you what that means. In our second sample, the average this time was 19.3 points higher and a standard deviation of 48.8. Let's plug these numbers into our formula and see what we get for upper and lower bounds for our population mean. So we have our x bar plus 2 times standard deviation, or 19.3 plus 3.1. That gives us 
Now we take our 19.3 and subtract 2 times 48.8 divided by square root of 1,000. And that gives us the lower bound, 19.3 minus 3.1, or 16.2. Now notice, we have a different mean, we have a different upper bound, 22.4, we have a different lower bound, 16.2. But we can still say, because of the way we did our sample, with a confidence interval of 95.4%, from sample 1, the population mean is between 19.5 points higher and 25.9 points higher. Or from sample 2, same confidence interval, 95.4%. We can say mu is between 16.2 points higher and 22.4 points higher. And we're going to be right 95.4% of the time. And we could take any number of samples and say this with that confidence level using this formula and this methodology. Now I want to point out part of this formula is used, it's called the margin of error. It's the part that we add or subtract from the sample mean. And here it is graphically. And the other thing I want to point out is that we're using a Z of 2, and the confidence interval is 95.4%. If we wanted 95.0%, it's a different value for Z. Z would be 1.96. If we wanted 99.0%, we could use a multiplier for Z of 2.576. In fact, we could find a lot of values of Z with different confidence intervals, which we'll do in a different video. Please like this video, subscribe to MathCat. Thank you for watching.